Welcome to Mafia Memoirs. Take we have two. a special edition. <laughs> We've actually taken a trip out to see Sydney with Iowa Wash Auto Detailing. <laughs> Sorry, I had I was like so many thoughts in my head. So sometimes when we get started, we have a little bit, a uh, few bumps. And so, yeah, our first take was a little bumpy. My name's Jody. I'm Rod. He can doesn't you, even know me. Can you hear us think now, about Scott? It. Can you hear us? <laughs> Somebody tell us if you can hear us. Yeah, now. that's awesome. So, can you now hear us? Yeah, yeah so lovely. we are good in life. So this is Sydney Bray Gwynn, right? Yep. Did I get that right? Yep. So she actually is local here <clears throat> in Idaho in a beautiful town called Hidden Springs. It's nestled in the foothills. And uh, we took the little drive. Believe it or not, <laughs> it takes like 45 minutes to get out yeah. here. But it yep. is gorgeous. Yep. And we, Yeah. So, so we are super excited to be out here. <laughs> yeah, so we actually were in Salt Lake City last week with Sydney at uh, Rennie Doyle's one day at extreme uh, auto detail training at the D, uh, what is it, Detail, detail Envy, Envy detail shop. Envy. And man, we just had a fantastic time. And uh, Sydney mm. and I were actually sitting down prior to the training beginning. And I thought it would be good to talk about how you got started because I think it's a really unique story. Yeah, so. um, it is kind of funny. So um, I actually used to be a dental office administrator and um, just got tired of that when kind of like the whole insurance industry started to change and stuff. So my family moved up to Hidden Springs about eight years ago. And um, like Jody said, it's way out of town. And so my problem was I was used to getting my car detailed. I kind of particular. <laughs> and so then I was up here in this town with no way to get a ride, you know, for somebody to take me to get my car detailed. So um, my husband and I have always been car fanatics and kept our cars clean and stuff. And so we used to live up at the front of the neighborhood by the mercantile. So when all of our neighbors have to get their mail at the mercantile, you have to go in and there's a whole mail room and stuff. And so my house was right outside the mercantile. And so every resident would have to drive through the Merck parking lot and exit right in front of my house. And so I was always out there. I had a black Pontiac G8 at the time. So I was always out there washing my car, detailing it. I was bored. Um, I wasn't working for the first time in my life. So I was always out there washing, detailing my car. So of course the neighborly thing, they would pull up and stop and say, well, do you want to do my next? You know? And so then it just like occurred to me like, Hey, if I have this issue of not being able to get my car detailed because you know, you would never want to ask a neighbor for a ride. They're like, oh, I'm not going all the way down the hill. And which is so funny for yeah, everybody watching because it's, like, yeah, sorry, it's yeah, really yeah. not that far away. It's really away. not that far well, It's a 35 here, minute drive. Right. So anybody that has a two hour commute right. to work, I <laughs> right. apologize. But and you live in Idaho, we don't do like, that. Yeah. And like Garden City is like six miles down yeah, the hill. Yeah, it's, but it, it was, it's a big deal. You don't want to get a ride. And people in Boise are <laughs> incredibly lazy. So, um, so then I thought, you know what? I should start washing my neighbor's cards, you know? So I threw it out on Facebook one day and said, hey, I'm home with my kids, they're in school, I know how to, you know, detail cars. And so I thought that like, maybe I would do <clears throat> one or two a month and that it would just be kind of like a side thing. Mm -hmm. And that very first week, which was in April of 2013, I had seven full details <laughs> wow. right away. And it literally has been nonstop since that day. Um, only one week was I shut down, which was like the third week of Snowmageddon because I couldn't get my own car out of the garage. Yeah, nobody could get but, anywhere. Right, yeah, but it was exactly. only the one week of like a five-week, yeah. you know, craziness. And That's so I've been nuts. totally booked. And so we've moved to a couple different houses in this um, neighborhood because then I thought, well, I'm not going to work during the winter. And then that first winter was so busy. And then, you know, we just had to keep <laughs> going to different houses to find something accommodating. Now we're in our final location, um, which is a newer home. And, you know, we kind of built it around the shop. So that's funny because yeah. so most, most women build their house around the kitchen. Right. I didn't She's about built hers house. around her shop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I spent more on the flooring in my shop than I did. You know, when they say like, oh, it's, you know, $3 a square foot or whatever. Like, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna do a tour here in a minute. Yeah, I'll show yeah. You the shop. It, it's a beautiful so, shop. Anyway, so, we'll look at that pretty quick yeah. here. So one of the um, one of the things that um, obviously, and, and I don't want to you know hyper focus on it, but there are not a lot of women in detail. Right, right. And so so far, the ones that I have met are a really good, mm -hmm. really, and, really good, and pay a lot more attention to detail yes. 
no pun intended at all, yeah. than most of us guys do. Yeah. Um, so I picked up on it right away with Sydney because when we were in Utah, we stopped <laughs> outside of the facility and she instantly went to the front of her car and started wiping bugs off. Yeah. I, I on the other hand, was like, oh, we're probably going to have to stop and scrub the dookie off the window soon before we go back to Idaho. So I noticed right away that she had a, a, a different eye for things like that. So. Yeah. Uh, does that kind of worry why you gravitate towards it? Yeah, or? yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, just in my life, I'm pretty detail oriented, and I appreciate a clean car. Mm -hmm. And I, I appreciate. I come from a background of like car racing, very car oriented. Um, when my husband asked me to marry him and asked me where I wanted to go on our honeymoon, I said Charlotte, North Carolina. I want to do all the NASCAR stuff. Like, <laughs> so I'm very, yeah, so I'm very car oriented anyway. And so for me, like, I have a lot of passion for. Um, even just keeping cars in good condition. So I like classic cars, but I also have a huge appreciation for like 90s vehicles, you know, like making them look new again. I enjoy the challenge. Um, but I do think, and nothing against men in the industry at all, but I do think that women are much more detail oriented. And I also think that there's um, that element of like not having an ego. Yeah. Um, and I've just noticed this within trainings that I've been in is, um, and usually the instructors will always comment on it, like, Oh, you actually listen like you know <laughs> and they're almost like always appalled like you know because and what I see um some <clears throat> men in trainings is they'll they act like they already know and they yeah. already know better and so for me like I'm like a sponge I love all the information and obviously then you glean through what works for you but um but I just know I notice working with other women in the industry too is just that we are a little bit you're, more. Yeah, we are a little bit more. Yeah, right? yeah. And that is, yeah. I think that's that's something that's yeah. kind of bred into guys. We're supposed mm -hmm. to do certain things. We're supposed to have an ego. We're supposed to know right. everything. Yeah. Um, I, I do think that that's something that I do appreciate about people in the mafia. Everybody mm -hmm. expects people in the detail mafia to have this huge ego. For sure. Some do. Yeah. <laughs> Parker. Um, but, <laughs> uh, but others don't. I mean, that's the coolest thing about it is some of the people that you think would have the biggest egos, right. guys that are just. Yeah huge a couple yeah. of dudes that you know you know who i'm talking about they're just huge guys they don't yeah. you can right. ask them yeah. anything and i yeah. and i pick on For sure. parker all the time i love yeah. to pick on you i love to pick on you but he <laughs> does, if you ask him a question he's going to tell you oh, first yeah. he's going to flip it on you but then he's going to tell you and the yeah. same thing with yeah. you know any of the guys justin lobato yeah. uh joab, joab uh, uh scott Mesha. Th those guys they they will answer any questions you know mm -hmm. sean sepulveda any of those guys mm -hmm. rennie i mean rennie's this great big you know, hulking man, and he still will answer <laughs> yeah. any questions. One of the most humble guys I've right. ever met. So yep. that is what I think is great about the family mm -hmm. of the Detail Mafia. For so. sure, 100%. Well, yep. One of the things that I think is really unique with you is you've been able to, because of not word of mouth, mm -hmm. but visual mouth, mm -hmm. you know, people seeing you work on your stuff, mm -hmm. it attracted Mm -hmm. a captive audience and you yeah. do have a captive audience oh, very I mean, when so. you drive yeah, out here so. you're yeah. the only person right so yeah. you own this mm -hmm. market yeah. and i think a lot of times uh do you, you know when i talk to other detailers they're like well i have a small market mm -hmm. i you know i'm really struggling because i'm in a small market well you're in probably very the small. tiniest yeah. market yeah. that we've interviewed anybody in yeah. and it just goes sh to show that if you have the right market the right skill set mm -hmm. the right temperament the right attitude towards people yep. you can build a really thriving mm -hmm. business oh, yeah. wherever yep. you are yeah and some of the things i do to help um build that captive audience was i offer a lot of um things that people like to be taken care of and so i offer pick up and drop off um up here there's a lot of people that travel for work and so you know when they're gone during the week i'll go pick up their car so it also leads to flexibility in my schedule to kind of stick those people in where I have holes. Um, so I offer a lot of services as well, like just to make it more convenient for them to get their car detailed. And I notice a lot of people will come to me and say, I would, I would have never had my car detailed. But because I make it so convenient for them and such like, you know, it just makes them feel so good. It's amazing to me how many people up here have their cars detailed that wouldn't otherwise think about doing because it. you're treating them like concierge right. would right, right. it's right. like mm -hmm. i have i wash out of detail and provide yeah. concierge service as mm -hmm. well as the detail yeah. yeah i just like how he says concierge Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. i have no idea <laughs> That's awesome. yeah. so how so how long have you been in business officially um like, six and a half years so it'll be seven years in april 
That's so, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So you've been in business a long time comparatively. Yeah. When we talked with a lot of mm -hmm. people that just started out. Um, what is your what is your specialty, if you will? Um, so I do do a lot of coatings now, but, um, but I also do a lot of full details and then I do, um, I mean, there's still full details, but I have a lot of customers that because my background's in the dental field, I still kind of am on that like six month recall situation. And I relate a lot of it to teeth. Like, you know, yeah, you wash your car every week, but you need me to like, you know, clay bar, it, get right, all, you yeah. know, kind oh, of put man. all that protection on. So I use a lot of, um, teeth related analogies. And also I'm very big on education with my customers. So I definitely, you know, I, I'm always educating them. You know, if you buy a brand new car, that's when it's the most vulnerable. That's when we need to get it in. Um, and so I do a lot of education. And then, um, so mainly I do a lot of maintenance details. So my schedule honestly repeats itself like every six months. So I have a lot of customers that come every six months faithfully, um, which is great. And, you know, then some come once a year and then, you know, I have new customers every now and then, but, um, and even my coding clients, I always keep them on a really good recall, you know, and, you know, just letting them know that hey, if we maintain that coding, we're not going to have to redo it. So, um, I do nice. think that that helps me a lot too, but, but a lot of full details on, and then up here, um, and this is one of my biggest regrets in my business is I wish I would have written a book, um, because it would be, not too late. it would be hilarious. <laughs> <Let's just say laughs> that. Um, I mean, I have seen everything up here from people with yeah. Lexus SUVs that carry their goats in the back. <laughs> Um, it is, I know. Oh, it's I, <laughs> raccoons under the seat. Like so many, so many crazy, crazy stories and things that I see up here because it's Idaho and rural. Um, and then just secrets that people have. I don't know. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. So yeah, all the time I'm like, I wish I would have written a book. Um, yeah, crazy so, things I have hilarious. seen. I, yeah. that, I think somebody, we should definitely start that. There's a, you know, there's like, <laughs> We should yeah. we should set up a website of yeah. weird crap I've found in people's yeah. cars, and then you could just anonymously post a picture yeah. of like, really? Yeah. You know? I mean, the raccoon. Like when I moved somebody's driver's seat forward, there was like a dead raccoon under the seat, and I was just like, I feel like you should know wow. that. You know? Yeah, I that's know. that's something you I feel would like probably you should understand. know that. Yeah. Oh, Rufus yeah. died. Yeah. yeah. I, I really need my car yeah. deodorized. Yeah. yeah. One day, a lady called and said, um, "This was right before school. She's dropping." So a mouse gave birth under my passenger seat this morning. Can I just run my car by on the way? <laughs> really? Sure. Can you set up mouse traps in my yeah. car? Don't <laughs> hurt them. Right. Don't hurt them. But I, mean, yeah. I actually right. know a guy that, that took um, two alpacas and he would stick them in his um, Volkswagen double cab pickup, like 1960s, so they have a little extra cab part, and he would load them one front and one rear in the back seat and haul them all yeah. over and it was it, it was a barn it yeah. smelled like a barn oh there's I mean, yeah plenty of barn cars up here for sure so do you have a barn fee <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> no, i probably should but yeah barn fee zoom fee. yeah yeah there should be like the dog Rats. hair removal right. and then dog hair barn and animal. barn animals <laughs> animal removal <laughs> she's gonna be like hey, what's that, what's that guy's name oh my gosh there's a there's a crazy guy from down in florida that's like a, a animal oh, removal yeah, yeah. guy oh yeah I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There so, you go. Yeah. The new—it's a new service. Anybody who's uh, <laughs> trying to figure out a service offering, go ahead and offer up a barn barn removal and animal fee. Yeah. To your detailing service That's today. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you not only I wash cars, but you I wash alpacas, mm -hmm. raccoons, sure. rats, yeah. mice. Yeah. Animal service. Tractors. So <laughs> I do it all. Well, there's other people who do tractors. I've yeah. seen some people do tractors and yeah. fire trucks and mm -hmm. um where when so you. Recently took Rennie's five day course? Yeah, um, in July. Oh, okay, yep. so real recently took yeah. that. Okay, yep. cool. So let's talk about that because I I remember in one one of portion of the advanced training, he was talking about doing test spots. Mm -hmm. And you just were like nodding because he was talking about yeah. doing <clears throat> multiple series of test spots. Yeah. And how normally they would go through that, mm -hmm. and I could just tell I was watching you, and you were just like, "Yeah, there's a lot to be learned yeah. there." Yeah, um, yeah. So the five day class was amazing, and and you get much more in depth. But the test spot thing was so interesting because I think that a lot of us like, well, you know, we might try a different pad or a different polish, and you know, you look at it and you go, "That totally acceptable results, right?" But when you do those test panels the way that he does them, it's amazing the difference that you get from different pads or different products and not every product works on every single car, mm. which, so that was really surprising to me. Like, 
you know, you just think, you know, one product that you have, you might really like, and it might work 70% of the time, but then you have that certain car that it's just going to give that extra pop. And if you have the products, you know, so that was, that was really interesting to me that just a little tweak in the pad and a little tweak in the, you know, product could make it. And they were big differences. Yeah. It wasn't just like a little bit, you know, um, some of them we had to kind of sit back and look with lights, but some of them it was like, Whoa, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Um, the five day trainings were really, really in depth. Um, the business stuff was invaluable, you know, especially for me at this point in my business where, you know, you kind of get in those years where you're like, okay, I'm actually making money at this. Like, you know, um, you know, what am I going to do with it? Um, but yeah, just the different techniques and, um, you know, when you're obviously for me, I don't use the test spots that much because mainly I'm just doing like one step corrections or whatever. But when you've got that coding customer or, you know, you really are doing a true paint correction, I mean, it really is a step that you should go through. Cause it's pretty surprising the difference yeah. that it makes. Yeah. yeah. So, so really cool. um, and that's one of the things that I picked up in Utah, uh, <laughs> it is, you know, on the interior side of things, um, it's, it's always been something that has kind of been a concern of mine is the mm -hmm. wrong product and what's it going to do right. the interior. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. my gosh, I just took the color off of this. I didn't know. So, you know, so doing a test spot in the interior is always mm -hmm. really, uh, to me is, is invaluable as far as getting that, um, making sure you're using the right product in there and also knowing your products. Obviously yeah. you're a big PNS user as we, I'm going to grab the laptop and we're going to scan around. <laughs> Holy crap. I mean, so, there's like probably a, a PNS, PNS tattoo. tattoo. So <laughs> where is it? Where is it? <laughs> yeah. figure out which <laughs> so, um, so in, along those same lines though, everybody has their secret sauce, right? Mm -hmm. And like you said, sometimes certain products work for certain yeah. things. And I know that, you know, for instance, if I call Justin Lobato on the phone and I tell him what car I'm working on, he's got a certain thing, or Mark, yes. you know, and, and, and they would have a certain thing. There's, do you see that in Idaho, because we have a really unique climate, yep. at some points in time we're going to be 108 degrees, yep. and at other times we're going to be minus eight. So we have a lot of extremes, <laughs> uh, only a couple of weeks for each of those. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so right now, two weeks ago when Jody and I were in Las Vegas at MT, it was 97 yep. degrees here. Today it's about like 67 degrees. Yeah. So big swing in temperature. Do you see that there's any, um, do your products change throughout the year in Idaho with the weather or is it really just depending on the paint and the, the brittleness or whatever? A lot of it is the paint. I, the thing I noticed probably the most is just um, like sometimes we have humidity here, which Idaho doesn't often have humidity. So in, I would assume that in climates where they're used to humidity, they're more in tune to the products changing. And here it can kind of sneak up on you because you're not used mm -hmm. to humidity. So like those last couple of weeks of August, we had really high humidity that we don't mm -hmm. normally have. Yeah. And so it was just something that I had to consciously go, you know, especially doing coatings or, you know, putting on bead maker or something, you just kind of have to be conscious of it. Um, but as far as like the cold, I don't have too many issues. Um, the paint, obviously, if something's been sitting outside, I try to really cool the paint down in here. But if something comes in and you know I have to wash it right away it's definitely you know the temperature of the paint is a lot different yeah, yeah. um you know black paint especially gets really hot but I don't have too many challenges with products mainly just a couple of just humidity I think yeah, more yeah. so than the heat here we do have pretty dry heat but I don't have any issues in the cold um other than you know the first year I was in business I literally skated on ice the entire winter yeah, yeah but yeah, um, yeah, I don't exactly break yeah. anything um, but, but yeah, the products here, I mean, we don't, we don't have as many challenges here as I think in, in other areas. Um, right, right. And we do have people, they do do some stuff to the roads. We do in the wintertime, we put some stuff on the roads. Yeah. Um, some ice. They do? Not Nampa. Well, yeah. they put a, they put a de -icer on the roads here that is. Yeah. So it years... actually makes it slicker. It yep. doesn't, it doesn't yeah. make any sense to me, but if you put yeah. the de -icer on the road and then you're sliding all over. Yep. And I actually followed up with um, the Idaho <clears throat> Department of Transportation on that. So last year, I believe it was last winter, not this last one, but the one before, right after Snowmageddon, they put like a 50% solid state salt. And then last year they added it even more in. So yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Salt and so I always yeah. tell my customers, like, you have to get that off right away and, you know, get a, get a layer of wax or whatever as a sacrificial layer because it's nuts here. Yeah, so let's do a quick tour. Okay, so we're, I'm going to do a tour. Let me grab the laptop. We're going to we're going to run around here. I just want you guys to see 
this this is what uh, attention to detail in your shop. If you notice the gap between the red, it's even the same all the way across here. And Shall I get the ruler out and measure? Yeah, that's right. I think so. I think it's exact. So, think it's exact. so here we go. This, the wall of product. This is actually a pretty nice shop. So people want to know how to set your shop up. This is a good uh, a good indication of how you should set a shop up. You know, <laughs> it, here's a must right here. Road FS, you gotta have that. So, so there you go. And then this is this is one of my favorite things about is right there. There you go. Love it. So, anyway, there you go. This is a great shop. Awesome. Okay, so um, how do people? We want to know how people get a hold of you if they're in this area. They just want to call you up. Somebody that's in the organizations yes yeah, so i'm on both facebook and instagram just under iwash auto detailing um i'll be at sema so if anybody is coming to sema i will be at sema in the pns booth the whole week yeah um, so <clears> come <throat> check it out and um but otherwise look me up on facebook and instagram and so that's iwash auto detailing hidden springs idaho yep. and she is the bomb i was watching her last <laughs> week i visited with her and you talk about a lady that has an attention to detail <laughs> <laughs> she is extreme so but anyway hey guys thank you so much for joining us for another episode of mafia memoirs you guys have a fantastic week and we will catch you next thursday right here same same time same bat channel new guests so <laughs> have a great day see ya